Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Kirk signing in again. I'm going to go over with you today the third lesson in this sequence unit for algebra. Today's topic is finding n and a sub n in an arithmetic sequence. So again, I'm gonna encourage you to um, have your handy note card. I made this note card from yesterday's notes. I just wrote down what the formula was. That's gonna come in handy when I'm reviewing at the end of the unit. So hopefully you've got your own note card. And again, pause the video as needed to get yourselves caught up with the notes, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. So let's see, today's idea is how to find n and a sub n of an arithmetic sequence. So I have the formula written on top here, a sub n is equal to a sub one plus d times n minus one. And here's my first question. Can you find the nth term as an explicit equation? What on earth does that mean, explicit equation? Well, right up here, this is the explicit formula, and they want me to come up with an explicit equation. That just means they want me to use this formula for this sequence of numbers. Okay, so just like yesterday, hopefully you did the homework, um, the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is try to figure out what the common difference is. So if I look between these numbers from two to six, I'm adding four. From 6 to 10, I'm also adding 4. And from 10 to 14, I'm also adding 4. So the common difference here is 4. So I'm just going to write that on the side before I start. Now again, just like yesterday, I'm trying to memorize this formula. There's going to be a lot of formulas this unit. So I'm going to start by writing this formula down. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. It's the same formula from yesterday. Now I'm gonna plug in what I know. They just said find the nth term. So I don't know what n is. I'm gonna leave it as a sub n. a sub one, that means the first term. In this sequence of numbers, what is the first term? Two. Plus d, well d is the common difference. In this question, the common difference is four. And they don't tell me what n is, so I'm gonna leave it as n. Now at our level, when it says write the explicit equation, you need to know that you need to distribute and simplify. So if I see a number in front of a parentheses, that's going to be my signal to distribute. So I'm left with a sub n is equal to two plus 4 times n is 4n, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So that's my distributing. And now I can simplify this because I notice that there's some like terms. Can you add the like terms? The like terms are 2 and negative 4. So my final answer is a sub n is equal to 4n minus 2. Now, if you wrote negative two in front, that's okay, but I just like to put it at the end here. So let's see here, what did we just figure out? I'm just gonna write on the side. We just figured out this is the explicit equation. And what would I use that for? Well, it's the explicit, explicit equation I would use to find the nth term so if I asked you, what's the 1,000th term in this sequence? All I would do is plug in 1,000 in place of the n and solve that for the 1,000th term. So actually, I'm going to write down this is the simplified explicit equation to find the nth term. So now here's my part B to this question. Use the explicit equation from above to find the 60th term. Okay, I'm going to slide this up just a smidge. So I'm going to use this equation from above, this equation that I boxed in, and I'm looking for the 60th term. So just like um, before, 
n is 60 now, so a sub 60 is equal to 4, instead of n, I'll plug in the number 60, minus 2. Now, I know a lot of you are good at your mental math and can figure this out, but again, I'm just going to show you on my calculator if I were to type this in. I would type in 4 parentheses 60 minus 2. Type it all in in one step. The output is 238. So I just figured out that the 60th term of my sequence is 238. Okay, so far so good. Um, I think that you have a lot of success on your homework today. Um, part of the questions just say write the explicit equation, which is this equation up here. And then the second part will say we'll use that equation now to find the eighth term or the 50th term, and that's what I just did here. So I'm going to go on to a different type of question now. So here's my question number two. Find n. I'm going to put n in quotes. Find n when a sub 1 is equal to 1, d is equal to negative 5, and a sub n is equal to negative 124. So just using that information alone, can we figure out what n is? Well, I know this handy little formula from yesterday. I'm going to start by writing that formula down a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. See, that's the formula we learned on the top of our notes today and from yesterday. So my challenge to you right now would be, can you plug in any of these values? I think you can. So perhaps pause the video and see what you can plug in. I'm going to move on. a sub n is this number right here, negative 124 equals a sub 1, they told it to me right here, the number 1, plus d, they told me d in the problem, is negative 5. I'll put a negative 5 in parentheses here. Parentheses, now it says find n, so I don't know what n is. I'm going to leave that as n. Well, wait a second. This looks pretty familiar to me now. This goes back to chapter 1. If you see a number in front of a parentheses, you're going to want to distribute that number. So I'm going to write down, step one was to plug in the values. The second thing I'm going to do now is to distribute. And I really like to annotate my notes so that later when you're not looking at the videos, you can figure out what it was that we did. Okay, so I'm going to copy this down. I've got negative 124 is equal to 1. Now if I distribute negative 5 times n, that becomes negative 5n. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. So now from here, I'm going to work on solving for n. Okay, so what am I noticing? Well, I can combine my like terms. I've got a 1 and a 5. So this becomes negative 124 is equal to 6 minus 5n. I'm trying to solve this for n. So the next thing I'm going to do is subtract 6 to both sides. So what is negative 124 minus 6? That's negative 130. And bring down my equal sign and bring down my minus 5n. Now, again, I'm trying to solve this for n, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. So this would be a good time to grab your calculators if you're not very good with the negatives here. And I would type in negative 130 divided by negative 5. 26. So what did I just figure out? Uh, n is 26. That's answering this question. But what exactly is this telling me in the context of this problem? If n is 26, what is that telling me? This is telling me that the 26th term of the sequence
is back up here, negative 124. So negative 124 is the 26th term of the sequence. And here's something I wanna ask you. Do you think n could ever be a negative number? Like could n be negative 10? What would that mean? The negative 10th number? That doesn't make any sense. So you can't have a negative for n. What about a fraction? Could n be a fraction? Could n be one half? Well, that would mean that the half term is something. That doesn't make any sense either. So for these situations, I want you to write down a note to ourselves here. n can never be a fraction a decimal or a negative number. Because you can't have like the half term or the 1.7th term. You can only have a positive integer for n. So when you're doing your homework today, keep that in mind. If you're getting n to be a decimal, you made a mistake. Now the last thing I want to go ahead and write on my notes here is something called the recursive formula. For arithmetic. You saw this yesterday, but I never gave it a name. The recursive formula looks like this. a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1. And I'll put a plus D at the end. Do you remember seeing that yesterday, that A sub N minus 1? What did that mean again? You got it. That meant the previous term. And then you also write what A sub 1 is. A sub 1 represents the first term. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and box this in. So this is a new set of formulas that I'm going to be following for the last part of my notes. Again, this is called the recursive formula. And the recursive formula is only really good if you have um, a small amount of numbers to find. Like if it says find the first five terms, this would be a good formula to use. But if it said to find the 1,000th term, this formula, you'd have to list out every single number to find the 1,000th term. So it really wouldn't be useful for that. So here's my last question of the notes today. My question number three. Write the recursive formula. For the sequence 2, 6, 10, 14, dot, dot, dot. So if I'm following this pattern here, the recursive formula says to write down a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus whatever d is. So if I look here, what is my d value from 2 to 6? I'm adding 4. From 6 to 10? I'm adding 4. From 10 to 14, I'm adding 4. So what is D? Plus 4. And then you have to write down what A sub 1 is when you write down a recursive formula. So in this particular set of numbers, what is A sub 1? It's the first term, which is the number 2. This is what the recursive formula would look like for this particular problem. And I chose this problem because I wanted you to compare it to actually question number 1. In question number 1, this is what an explicit formula looks like for that sequence. And this is what a recursive formula would look like for the same sequence. Again, this formula would only be useful if it said find the first three terms or four terms. Question number one is a lot more useful um, to know because you can use that formula to find the 60th term. That was pretty cool. All right, anyways, I'm going to leave this notes sheet right over here. So feel free to pause the video at any point to copy your notes down. I really appreciate your tuning in today. Uh, tonight's homework is going to be another worksheet, homework 12-3. Thank you so much. And if you're having questions on the homework, please send me a WITS mail so that I can address those questions in the future. I hope that you're using your calculators to test these things out. And until next time, please take care and stay safe. This is Mrs. Kirk signing out. I miss you all.